The History of Hook and Chessington. This talk is brought to you by the Kingston Heritage Service. You can find out more by visiting the Kingston History Centre based in Kingston Guildhall. The talk is on the history of Hook and Chessington, illustrated with some of the resources, mainly photographs and maps, from our collections. If you have any questions, you can email us at local.history at kingston.gov.uk. Although I've tried to cover a lot of ground in this talk, there's still much that hasn't been mentioned. This isn't because it wasn't important or interesting, I just didn't have time. To mention everything, the talk would be at least three hours long. So please don't be offended if I've missed out your favourite story or haven't mentioned an event or person or building you wanted to know more about or not given enough detail on something I mentioned briefly. This is a map of Surrey in the 18th century. Hook and Chessington are such close neighbours that today it's hard to tell where one ends and the other begins. But in the past, they were two very separate villages. In the past, counties were divided into different administrative areas called hundreds. Hook was in the Kingston Hundred, the red area, but Chessington was in the Copthorne Hundred, the yellow area. They were linked with their connections to Merton Priory, as we shall see later. It's the Ordnance Survey map for 1865, with the boundaries marked in red. I'll begin my talk with Chessington. It was a very small parish, and I will use the word parish, but as we shall see, this is not quite accurate. In 1911, it was described as a very small village, a chapelry to Malden, measuring three miles from northeast to southwest, and barely a mile in any part from northwest to southeast, and contains 1,645 acres. This includes a detached part of Malden round the farm called Rushet, which lies south of Chessington and was added to the parish in 1884. The soil is entirely London clay, undulating considerably. A brook which flows into the Hogsmill stream runs through the parish, which is traversed throughout by the road from Kingston to Leatherhead. Long before written records, people lived in this area. Just outside the Chessington border, on Ashdod Common, an Iron Age settlement has been found. But more exciting, in 1998, these four Iron Age gold coins, early first century, were discovered by two off-duty policemen using metal detectors on farmland near Malden Rushet, providing early evidence of the first settlers in Chessington. They were declared treasure trove and valued at £4,000. With the aid of the Victoria and Albert Purchase Fund, grants, the National Arts Council Fund and donations, the museum were able to buy the Chessington hoard. Another two coins were found at Chessington in 1999 and all six coins are on display at Kingston Museum today. The Doomsday Book, compiled for William the Conqueror in 1086, is the first written record we have of Chessington. Its name came from the Anglo-Saxon Kissandun, hill belonging to a man named Kissa. For such a small place, it had two owners. It was held partly by Robert de Watville and partly by Milo, or Miles, Crispin. Its doomsday assets were one and a half hides, which was an area of land, part of a mill worth two shillings, four ploughs, woodland worth 30 hogs, and it rendered seven pounds. There were 10 households, making a population of about 50 people. The Manor of Chessington was included with the ownership of the Manor of Malden. In 1249, it was granted to Walter de Merton, who founded a House of Scholars at Malden. The House of Scholars was later transferred to Oxford, where it formed Merton College. In 1264, a charter assigned Chessington Manor to support 20 scholars. And in 1279, a charter granted by Henry III turned Merton College holdings at Chessington into a hunting park 
for the exclusive use of masters and scholars and became known as Chessington Park. Merton College retained ownership of Chessington Park until 1578, when Queen Elizabeth I confiscated land at Chessington to offer it to Lord Arundel in exchange for his land in Yule to develop the Nonsuch estate and palace. It remained in private hands until 1707, when Merton College regained ownership after legal proceedings, and Merton College is still the greatest landowner in Chessington today. And this is the medieval chapel at Merton College. In the early 12th century, Gilbert the Knight began to form a monastery in the area. He funded a new order approved by King Henry I called the Black Robed Augustinian Canons. In 1211, the King granted Merton Priory a royal charter, and it was also linked with Kingston Parish Church. The part of Chessington Manor not owned by Merton College was held by Merton Priory and became known as the Manor of Chessington at Hook until the dissolution of the monasteries. At the dissolution, Chessington Manor held by Merton Priory was granted to William Riggs and Peter Gearing, and after them it was owned by several different families. The ownership of manors is complicated, but you can read about it in the Victoria County history. And this gateway is the only surviving part of Merton Priory that can be seen above ground. St Mary's is first mentioned in Merton Priory records in 1174 as a chapel to Malden. The original church was tiny, probably only the present chancel, which is only four metres wide. There is a tradition that it was visited by knights on their way to the Crusades, who carved crosses in the door jams. In this picture of about 1800, you can see a wooden grave marker. These were quite common in areas where there was no natural stone for gravestones. Over the years, the church has been extended, a major renovation in 1854 and a south aisle added in 1870, and windows at various states since the 13th century. Until 1938, the Vicar of Malden also officiated at Chessington though he was sometimes helped by a curate. But in 1938, Chessington finally became an independent parish with its own vicar. St Mary's Church has been threatened many times due to the housing development at Chessington, even in the 1960s, when it was proposed to replace it with a larger building. But it still survives, now with a Great Two listing. In this map of 1746, you can see how small the village of Chessington was. However, there were a few large houses. Leading from the Leatherhead Road is a lane going up to a large unnamed building just under the sea of Chessington. This was Chessington Hall. Formerly known as Freem Manor, it was that part of Chessington owned by Miles Crispin in the Doomsday Book, and it was bought in 1746 by Christopher Hamilton. Samuel Crisp lived with his great friend Christopher Hamilton and his family at Chessington Hall. This is a painting of Fanny Burney, who was a famous authoress and celebrity of her time in the late 18th and 19th centuries. Fanny Burney spent long periods of time at Chessington Hall during the 1760s and 1770s, visiting her dearest family friend, Samuel Crisp. Fanny had her own room at Chessington Hall and knew Samuel Crisp fondly as Daddy Crisp. In 1776, Burney wrote her first book, Evelina, at Chessington. After Crisp's death in 1783, the hall was let to Colonel Dalrymple, who allowed the future King of William IV to use it for his assignations with the actress, Mrs Jordan. Chessington Hall was pulled down and rebuilt in 1833. In 1946, the then owners, the Barker family, were forced to sell it under compulsory purchase order by Surbiton Urban District Council in order to build 400 council homes. The hall itself survived until 1965, when it was also demolished. Another house shown on the old map is labelled Burnt Stub Farm. 
This was originally called Chessington Lodge and is so marked on the Ordnance Survey maps. It was probably built in the mid 14th century and it's said that it was used as a school for archery officers and was visited by Queen Elizabeth I. A cavalier stronghold during the English Civil War, it was burnt down by parliamentary soldiers, probably at the same time as the Battle of Surbiton in 1648, which happened nearby. On being rebuilt, it became known as Burnt Stub. Used as a farmhouse and alehouse, it was enlarged in the 19th century. Sold in 1931, its later history will follow. Throughout the 19th century, Chessington remained a remote rural village, its only link to the wider world, the Kingston to Leatherhead Road, turnpiked in 1811. By 1821, Chessington was a small hamlet with a population of about 150 people. It had a church, school, farm cottages and a few noble mansions. In the 18th and early 19th centuries, agricultural improvements and the need to produce more food led to widespread enclosure of common fields and wastelands. By 1825, when the Chessington Enclosure Act was made, most of the farmland was already enclosed. The only land left was the waste and common land, most of which was along the Leatherhead Road. And this map shows how this land was parcelled out. The population was very small, 137 in 1801, only rising to 521 in 1901, almost all working in agriculture. A few houses had been built from 36 to 115. And this picture shows harvesting at Park Farm in 1906. Chessington had several inns and alehouses, but probably the best known was the Bonesgate Beer House, located in Moor Lane. Until the 18th century, the beer house was known as the Gate. Then a landlord, known as Mr Bourne, apparently built a footbridge over the water splash with a gate that he only opened during trading hours, but the public demanded that it be removed. Mr Bourne is said to have hung up the gate from the willow tree with these words. This gate hangs well and hinders none. Refresh and pay and travel on. His name was later misspelt as Bone and the pub became known as the Bones Gate. In 1931, Mr. R. Goddard bought the estate once called Burnt Stub to open a zoo to hold his own private collection of wild animals. The Surrey Zoological Gardens opened daily with an all animal circus. When it first opened in July on a bank holiday, it welcomed 2,100 visitors and became the largest private zoo in the country. It animals from all over the world with lots of fairground attractions. And it's now, of course, Chessington World of Adventures and still as popular with children and families today as it was in these photographs. This is the first day of service of the trains to Chessington South Station on the 28th of May, 1939. Originally, Chessington South was due to be called Chessington Grange. The line extension to Leatherhead was stopped due to the war and green belt, and the coming of the railway marked the end of Chessington's isolation. We should look at the history of Chessington and Hook from 1939 onwards later, but for now, let's move on to Hook. The manor of Kingston stretched from the riverside at Ham across the wastes of Kingston and Surbiton Commons to a long, narrow strip of land between Chessington and Long Ditton. It was in this area, south of the commons, that the hamlet of Hook grew up. The name may have come from the hook shape of the manor at this point.
the 1865 Ordnance Survey map again. Like Chessington, Hook was linked to Merton Priory through a royal charter granted in 1211. The first reference to Hook is in a court case of 1223, and Hook appears from time to time in records of taxation and land ownership. Barwell Court, as it looked in 1973. Most people think Barwell Court is in Chessington, but it's actually in Hook. It became a separate estate under Merton Priory in at least the 14th century. In 1375, the Vicar of Kingston was entitled to eight cows, two sows, five geese, five ducks, ten hens and a dovecot as tithes from Barwell. On the dissolution of the monasteries, it was taken by the king to be part of the Hampton Court estate, but was granted by Elizabeth I to a Thomas Vincent in 1587, since when it has been owned by many families, and occupied recently by such people as rock band Genesis, who wrote their album Selling England by the Pound while staying there in 1973, and Sir Bob Geldof, who lived at Barwell Court for two years in the late 1970s, along with members of his band The Boomtown Rats and TV presenter girlfriend Paula Yates. Hook remained a small hamlet, squashed as it was between the wastes of Surbiton Common and the parish boundaries of Long Ditton and Chessington. In 1664 there were 18 inhabited houses. By 1730 there were still only 18 houses with 85 people and it continued so until 1811. In the 19th century, two transport innovations were to transform Hook. The development of turnpike roads made the transport of goods and people much quicker and easier. The upkeep of the roads was paid by tolls collected at gates along the route. In 1811, the Kingston to Leatherhead Road was planned, now the A243, this milestone still stands at near Hearn Road. The toll gate was at the junction with another turnpike leading from Long Ditton to Yule, the Ditton Road near the Maypole pub. As with Chessington, enclosure of the commons and wastes affected Hook. The Kingston enclosure was proposed in 1808, partly to fund a new courthouse, but it was not completed until 1838. The new turnpike and building plots encouraged more people to live in Hook, but the biggest change was in 1838, when the new railway opened at Surbiton. Suddenly Hook was in reach of the wider world. Throughout its existence, the people of Hook had to travel to Kingston for all their spiritual needs, baptisms, marriages and burials. It was widely felt to be a bad situation. And in her will of 1833, Anne Savage, widow of a vicar of Kingston, left a thousand pounds to build a chapel in Hook. A plot of land was sold by Sarah Langley of Southborough Lodge, and building began in August 1837, and the new chapel was consecrated in September 1838. It was not a parish church, but a district church in the parish of Kingston, becoming an independent parish in 1868 dedicated to St Paul. By 1880, the church was unfit for purpose, being too small and needing expensive repairs. The foundation for a new church was laid in February 1882 and consecrated a year later. The old building was then demolished and its bricks used to build the boundary wall. Music was an important part of the church, and this photograph shows the choir of St Paul's in 1942 with the Reverend Featherstone. The proximity to Surbiton Station and a change in the electoral franchise led to a growth in house building. Building societies bought land and sold it for house building to help their shareholders qualify for the vote. The large houses at the north end of Hook Road were a result. Even so, the population was still not large, 364 in 1871 and 578 in 1901. One such house was St David's Villa at 14 Hook Road. For five months, from 1874 to 1875, 
Thomas Hardy lived here with his new wife Emma. During this time, Far From the Madding Crowd was published. The house was demolished in the 1960s and Midhurst Court flats now stand here, but there is a blue plaque commemorating Hardy on the house next door. Another earlier house was Southern Hay at Hook Road, built in about 1814, but still standing. The famous children's author Enid Blyton was a governess to the four sons of Horace and Gertrude Thompson at Southern Hay from 1920 to 1924. She was inspired to write her first book here by the children she was teaching. This is Gosbury Hill, also known as Gosbury Hall or Hook Hall. Originally a Georgian farmhouse, it was the largest estate in Hook. Bought by Thomas Hare, an important political writer, in 1855, he greatly enlarged it over the years with a nine acre park, private chapel, tower, farm and orchard. It was owned by the Hare family until 1890 when they sold the estate. It was later owned by the Browns and then the Ricardo families before it was demolished. And this is a plan of the estate from the sale catalogue of 1890. You can see the park in green, the kitchen garden in blue and the orchard in yellow. Until recently, the hamlet of Hook was famous for orchards, strawberry fields and farm produce. This slide shows the corn ricks opposite the North Star at Stickley Farm. The Stickleys go back to the 1850s when the family established themselves as farmers and council subtenants in Hook Road. These are members of the Stickley family outside the North Star in Hook Road after a shoot in about 1900. And the family also owned Haycroft Farm. And this is the Haycroft Farm house, which was demolished in 1927. Harry Hawker was born in Australia and came to England to learn to fly. In 1912, he joined the Sopwith Company in Kingston, where he helped develop planes throughout the First World War. In 1917, he married and came to live in Hook. He attempted to fly the Atlantic in 1919, and although he failed, he was hailed as a national hero. In 1920, the Sopwith Company was renamed H.G. Hawker Engineering to avoid taxes. On the 12th of July 1921, he was testing a plane which crashed and he was killed. His funeral in Hook was attended by hundreds of people and his memorial is in the churchyard. The Kingston Bypass was opened on the 28th of October 1927 by the Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin. This opened up the area for building and in the 20 years between 1931 and 1951 over 1500 new houses were built along with new shops and businesses. One such new business was the Ace of Spades. It was a petrol filling station named after the company who sold the petrol. But it was far more. It was the epitome of what became known as the 1930s roadhouse, with restaurants, a dance floor, swimming pool and even an airstrip. Open all hours, it attracted London theatre goers and socialites. Wartime restrictions put an end to this trade and it declined, but it was still patronised by show business people in the 1950s, until it was destroyed by fire in around 1956. It was rebuilt, but the building of the underpass took some of the land, including the swimming pool. The pub struggled on, renamed the Cap in Hand until a few years ago, and is now awaiting redevelopment. This is Hook Road, known here as Surbiton Road, at the Ace of Spades Junction in the 1940s. And this is the shopping centre on the Hook Roundabout in the 1950s. And the Ace Parade. Ace Parade was built in about 1938 on the site of a Haycroft House. This is the Ace of Spades Roundabout in the late 1950s with the rebuilt Ace of Spades public 
house in the background. And as you can see, it, the traffic was in total gridlock. As a result, the underpass was built, which opened on the 12th of February 1960, and relieved the traffic congestion by taking the A3 bypass under the roundabout. In 1939, war was declared. In Chessington, the RAF had set up a barrage balloon station in 1938, one of ten around London. After the war, it became a medical rehabilitation centre, which closed in 1984 and was then taken over by the US Army until they left in the 1990s, and the site is now housing. This map shows where all the bombs fell in the Surbiton Urban District. Most of those which fell on the Chessington and Hook area caused damage, but few casualties. But on the 2nd of October 1940, one fell on Chessington Zoo, killing three people. Other bombs fell on the zoo, destroying a monkey cage and a penguin enclosure. On the 17th of June 1944, a V1 rocket fell on Clayton Road, killing three people. Later that year, another rocket fell nearby, killing three more. In May 1945, VE Day was celebrated around the area. This is the party in Gladstone Road. For many, the war was not yet over. There was a prisoner of war camp on the site of the Hook Centre from 1946 to 1948 with German and Italian prisoners. Since 1945, there have been huge changes in the area, more than I can cover in this short talk. So I'll leave you with this. If you want to find out more, please visit the History Centre, or you can read more in the books listed here. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this short talk. Thank you very much.